thank you very much everyone um, I think ever since I've been here I've tried to always be extremely honest with everyone and uh, I think it's important we're all all of you have been sending me messages over the last 48 hours or since Friday when the photos came out and yeah thank you for bringing it to my attention you know the welfare and the safety and the well-being of all our players and staff is very important and we don't take that lightly which is the very reason why all our teams now are on contracted salaries and earning good money and being paid allowances when they're travelling. But on saying that, we let our Fiji Woman Simmons team down on their travel from Fiji to Dubai. Yes, I know you've all seen the photos they were real and yes the girls had to stay outside of Sydney Airport for four hours. The men's team had pre-booked their accommodation but when Coach Fully on arrival in Sydney tried to get rooms in nearby hotels none were available. So he advised the girls that had to stay outside the airport for a few hours. Yes, rooms should have been pre-booked, like the men, because it was known before they left Fiji that they would have to leave the airport for a few hours. As is the usual practice, all the travel and layover accommodation is organised by the World Rugby HSBC tournament team. Apparently they advised they weren't aware that Sydney Airport closed down at 11 o'clock each night. Hence they didn't book accommodation in Sydney. They thought it was just a normal layover and the team could rest between flights within the airport and I think all of you who have travelled internationally and taken uh, flights where you have to lay over in an airport you generally have to stay within the airport and I spoke to a travel agent and they said they generally allow four to five hours within the airport so that you have plenty of time for the three hour check-in times and you have in case the planes are late so it's quite normal to do that. I mean I've had the same thing even going from Suva to Auckland where I've had five to six hours at Nandy Airport. But normally in our case the team manager would attend to these sort of issues where, where uh, these are outstanding matters that hadn't been attended to by World Rugby such as booking rooms. But regrettably as you may remember that um, the team manager was not with the team. She was returning from the Pacific Games in Solomon where she'd been with the girls team there. And she didn't join the team in, until later in Dubai too. But of course I can tell you what happened but none of it's right. The girls were let down. The one good thing that came out of this is that Emirates Airlines, who are the sponsors of the Dubai Sevens, realising what had happened with the girls and their rest period in Sydney, ensured that all the girls' management and team could have a well-earned rest and they could sleep on the 15-hour flight from Sydney to Dubai as all of them were upgraded to business class and if you've ever flown Emirates business class is luxurious. They arrived well rested therefore on the Sunday in Dubai for the tournament which didn't commence till five days later so they had a, a good week to train and rest and get ready and we all know
Results in Dubai were pretty good. They came in fifth. This route has been taken previously by the teams and it seems that poor planning and communication within Rugby House, with World Rugby and across both teams contributed to the woman spending time outside the airport. Since this trip, I'm happy to report the General Manager of High Performance, BJ, and <coughs> the Women's High Performance Manager, Alana, who are responsible for all our national teams, have starting meetings with all the team managers prior to them leaving for any overseas tournament. This ensures we all, we all have everything covered. Managers are now communicating and working together. And after Dubai, we appointed a new manager to the women's team, Sevens team. And so they're working together now so that we are not doubling up and everybody is supporting each other. Full reports are now being provided by coaches and managers after each leg, and we addressed this previously, I think. So we can ensure that everything we do is better and looks after the well-being of our teams and managers. I, you know, it is sad that this incident occurred. It has taught us a lot of lessons and all have been taken to heart. It will not happen again, certainly not on our watch. And it hasn't happened since over the past five months, thankfully. So I again apologise to Sayasi fully, to the team officials, but more importantly to the woman who were representing us all in Dubai. In the box. You're probably wondering, what's in the box? Well, if you must know, it's actually me. Before you call the police, I'm actually an app. The all-new Fiji Village app. Here's an update. <laughs> See what I did there? I gave you an update. What's new? Well, for starters, I look different. My new layout also comes with stories, if you're looking for something short and sweet. I will bring you the latest news on the dot so you stay updated. You're welcome. You don't have to go anywhere for content because I bring the content to you. Not only can you listen to your favorite radio station, you can now watch online video content. Ah, which reminds me, are you looking forward to the Coke games? Well, guess what? I can give you live tallies and stream Fiji Village Relive so you can keep updated no matter where you are. Your number one news website just got better with an app. Download and get updated now.